Welcome to Unit 7, Video 1, Waves. By the end of this video, you should know the meaning of wavelength, frequency, and energy as they apply to waves. You should know how energy corresponds to color of light, and you should be able to calculate wavelength, frequency, and energy. So before we start talking about the features of waves, let's talk about the kind of energy we're referring to here. Here we're looking at radiant energy. Radiant energy is energy that travels in the form of electromagnetic radiation. This is unlike energy that travels via heating, which requires contact between the objects. Light is the most common example of radiant energy. What's interesting is sometimes light and other energy behaves like a particle, and sometimes it behaves like a wave. For right now, we're going to focus on its wave-like characteristics, and we'll come back and talk about its particle characteristics later. So there are a few properties of waves that we can define. The first is wavelength. Wavelength is the distance between two consecutive peaks of a wave. So for instance, I can choose any two peaks. Here I've chosen this one and this one. And if I measure the distance between those peaks, I have the wavelength. Up top, we have a shorter wavelength than the one down the bottom because these peaks of these waves are further apart, so they have a longer wavelength. Different wavelengths correspond to different amounts of energy. More on that in a minute. We can also define the frequency of a wave. This is the number of wave points that pass a certain point per given time period, usually per second. So for instance, if I had this wave moving and I measured the number of peaks that passed, let's say, this point right here, this line, every second, the wave on the top would have more waves passing that line every second than the wave on the bottom. So you'll notice the shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency. The longer the wavelength, the lower the frequency. Given what we saw in the previous slide, do you think the relationship between wavelength and frequency is direct or inverse? You're right. You should have said inverse. The, as wavelength increases, frequency decreases. We can relate this using an equation. This equation mirrors the inverse relationships we looked at with the gas laws. Here, we have lambda representing wavelength. C is the speed of light. And that's a constant. You'll always be given that, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Again, wavelength is lambda, and that's measured in meters. And, and uh, V, or nu, the Greek letter nu, is our frequency in hertz. Hertz is just a, how many cycles per second, so you can also use s to the negative 1 or 1 over s for 1 over seconds in place of hertz. I'm sure you've heard of electromagnetic radiation before. This is radiant energy that has wave-like behavior. So x-rays, visible light, infrared radiation, these are all examples of electromagnetic radiation. Here's a chart showing the different uh, types of electromagnetic radiation. What's interesting is, notice we can only see this tiny little sliver that's cut out here, this tiny little visible light sliver. We've expanded that down below so that you can see it in more detail. But notice there are all kinds of other types of radiation, going all the way to the longest wavelength of AM radio to the shortest wavelength of gamma rays, which we talked about in the previous unit. Notice also that as you get a, sh a shorter wavelength, a smaller wavelength down this end, you have a higher energy, which is represented by the arrow up top. Therefore, gamma rays have a much higher energy than AM radio waves. What you're responsible for knowing is the fact that energy increases as you go from red to yellow, or to red to orange to yellow to green to blue to indigo to violet. You need to know the order in which energy increases or decreases. Recall Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. That goes from longest wavelength and lowest energy to shortest wavelength and highest energy. Just like we relate, related wavelength and frequency, we can also relate energy and frequency. Based on what you just saw, do you think this relationship is direct or inverse? 
it's direct. And here's the equation to represent it. Notice this again mirrors the direct relationships we looked at when we studied gas laws. As energy goes up, wavelength will also, excuse me, frequency will also go up. Here, energy is measured in joules. H is a constant called Planck's constant. It's named for Max Planck, and its value is 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds. And frequency is measured in hertz again, or 1 over seconds. We can use these equations now, along with the constants associated with them, to perform some calculations. Make sure you have all these written down, and then you can try some. Here's some practice problems. Pause the video here, and use the values you just wrote down along with the equations on the previous slide to solve these problems. When you come back, I'll display the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we defined wavelength as the distance between two consecutive peaks of a wave, and frequency as the number of waves that pass a given point per second. Then we looked at how energy corresponds to color. Recall Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, is ordered from lowest energy, red, to highest energy, violet. Then we looked at how to calculate wavelength, frequency, and energy using the two equations and Planck's constant and the speed of light.